Here's your latest African news. Ethiopia. Thousands of Ethiopians protest the relentless Western media propaganda war against them in Addis Ababa. Tens of thousands of people took part in mass protest in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa on Sunday to show confidence in the Ethiopian government in its fight against rebels and protest the relentless Western media propaganda war against them on conflict from major Western-based news organizations. The protesters could be seen with signs calling out various media houses like CNN and BBC for false reporting, supporting terrorists and for interference in Ethiopia's politics. Since the conflict started last November, these Western media media houses have been propping up the now-designated terrorist group, the TPLF, sharing their propaganda and giving various other rebel groups fighting against the Ethiopian government platforms to share their propaganda. Please join in this week for the return of our show, Africa in the News, as we go in-depth on why these media houses are relentlessly attacking Ethiopia. Sierra Leone Nearly 100 killed in Sierra Leone fuel tank explosion a massive fireball sparked by a fuel tank explosion killed 98 people in Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, the West African country's disaster management agency said. The blast happened when a fuel tanker collided with another truck at a petrol station on Friday night, according to witnesses. The flames then spread, burning people in cars and on roads nearby. The National Disaster Management Agency said in a statement that 98 deaths had been recorded so far and 92 survivors are currently admitted to various hospitals in Freetown. Town. Vice President Mohamed Juldel Jalo had earlier given a death toll of 98 after arriving at the scene, adding that all those injured would receive free treatment. Sudan Sudan forces disperse anti-coup protesters, arrests dozens. Sudan's security forces dispersed protesters and rounded up more than 100 people Sunday in the capital of Khartoum in the latest crackdown on pro-democracy protesters after last month's military coup. The Sudanese military seized power October 25th, dissolving the transitional government and arresting dozens of officials and politicians. The coup has drawn international criticism and mass protests in the streets of Khartoum and elsewhere in the country. The takeover has upended the country's fragile planning transition to democratic rule more than two years after a popular uprising. Teachers and education workers protested the coup outside the education ministry in Khartoum's district of Bari. Security forces used tear gas to disperse the protesters and arrested at least 113 people, mostly teachers. There were also sporadic protests elsewhere in Khartoum. West Africa West African leaders meet to discuss coup in Guinea and Mali. An extraordinary summit of heads of state of the Economic Community of West African States opened this Sunday, November 7th in Accra, Ghana, devoted to the examination of political development in the Republic of Guinea and the Republic of Mali. One of the main issues to be discussed during this extraordinary summit is the respect of deadlines set for the holding of presidential elections that should lead to civilian rule in both Bamako and Conakry. In both countries, the military that seized power dissolved the government and institutions and abolished the constitution. Kenya UK willing to extradite soldiers to face murder charges in Kenya the UK is ready and willing to extradite its soldiers accused in the murder of a Kenyan woman in 2012 Britain's Armed Forces Minister James Heapy said last week. Mr. Heapy, who is on a visit to the country, said the legal jurisdiction lie with the government of Kenya, where the murder of Agnes Wanjiru was committed. This comments come after locals in the town of Nanyuki took to the streets in the past week calling for justice for Wanjiru. The situation worsened after reports recently surfaced that the implicated soldiers joked and laughed about the murder according to Facebook records. Wanjiru is alleged to have been killed by a British soldier in 2012. Local said she was seen at a bar leaving in the company of British servicemen. Police in Kenya, who are to reopen investigations into the murder, found Agnes's body in a septic tank at the Lions Court Hotel in Nanyuki. Nigeria USC Kamaru Usman retains welterweight crown in win over Covington. Kamaru Usman retained his UFC welterweight belt on Saturday evening in New York following a win on points against Colby Covington. Usman's unanimous win took him to a stunning record of 20 wins and 1 loss, extending his winning run by 19 consecutive fights. Usman won the fight by unanimous decision to defend his welterweight crown at the UFC 268 and rack up the 15th straight UFC fight victory. His record stands only behind Brazilian's Anderson Silva's 16 straight wins. Kenya Kenya's Albert Courier and Perez Chepchirchir have won the New York City Marathon. 
The New York City Marathon got underway in person on Sunday for the first time since it was cancelled last year and Perez Chepchirichir of Kenya won the women's division, blazing past the pack with an unofficial time of 2 hours 22 minutes and 39 seconds. Albert Career, also of Kenya, took home the top prize in the men's division, completing the marathon in 2 hours 8 minutes and 22 seconds. Thanks for watching. Visit our YouTube channel Tunacheki to watch our daily news reports and our website tunacheki.tv for all the latest news updates. Also, don't forget to catch our new show Startup Africa every Thursday on our channel. You can directly support this news series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a Patreon. And remember, Africa is watching.